Today we're taking these fenders off of the 280Z. You'd think it'd be pretty intuitive, but there's definitely a few little tricks that you need to know. First things first, to catch up where I'm at, you'll probably have to take the bumper off if you haven't already, but I think that's about it. Next, I'd remove these inspection doors as they're called. I did this out of order, of course, because if you pull on the cowl first, it's probably gonna hit these inspection doors, but if your paint's not in great shape, then it probably won't be too much of an issue. With these out of the way, now take the cowl out. It's held in by four screws in the front. The windshield wipers come off with a bolt and then you can rotate them loose. Lift the cowl and pull it towards the front of the car. The cowl has tabs on it that slide out from these little plastic inserts near the windshield. Now, PB blast the crap out of these Phillip head screws that were under the cowl. There's a good chance these are rusted on and they're really easy to strip because it's a dang Phillips head exposed to the elements. You might soak the other screws and bolts as well just to be safe. There's obviously these ones along the top of the engine bay, which you can easily see. There's one bolt hidden in each door and two bolts underneath. Then the first roadblock. I hope you're luckier than me and don't have these rocker panel side skirt things. Apparently some dealers offered them and they were installed with a crap ton of rivets. Obviously as you can see they're attaching the fender to the rest of the car. I guess dealers weren't planning on servicing or replacing these panels. It's drilling time I guess. But the secret was finding the perfectly sized drill bit for the rivets. I'd recommend using cheap drill bits because if you're like me, you're going to break a few. Too small of a drill bit and it'll break off or not fully release the rivet. Too big and you're just putting giant holes in your car. Once I got the perfectly sized bit and got into a flow, it moved quickly. But why so many rivets? So just drilling off the head of the rivet allows me to get the panel off, which is the main goal. Later on, I can sand down the rest of that rivet, pull it out, or just grind it off. All right, so the fenders. I start with the terrible Phillips head screws because there's no reason undoing everything else if I'm just gonna get stuck here. You'll see how much downward pressure I'm applying to try to prevent it from stripping. One little slip of the screwdriver and you'll probably have to seek other methods to get it out. I managed to get three of the four out with just a screwdriver, but one stubborn one took some more encouragement. The solutions I'm aware of, starting with what's probably most accessible, is obviously PB blast and weight, hammer the screw or the bolt with a punch to try to break it loose, apply heat with a heat gun. I used a shop towel for a tighter fitment of my screwdriver because my screwdriver was a little bit undersized. You can use vice grips. If those don't work, then you'll probably have to result to some more hands-on methods like drilling it out or using specialized bits to remove the screw or bolt. Use an angle grinder or a Dremel to make a slot for a larger flathead screwdriver, or you can even weld on a bolt head. Luckily for me, the vice grips had enough grip and torque to break mine loose. I like to separate the headlight buckets before removing the fender. It may not be required, but it's one less thing to worry about. Remove these two bolts right here above the hood hinge area that go into the headlight bucket. Yeah, don't worry about that rust. It's, uh, we call that a patina. But while you're here, also remove these two bolts that go into the fender. In the wheel well area, there's three nuts holding the headlight bucket to the fender. But I did leave my headlights installed in the fender. And obviously disconnect any wiring going to the headlight. Okay, back to the fender. Just remove the bolts and screws along the top of the engine bay. Then there's that one sneaky bolt hidden by the door. The right length socket should allow you to get in there fine. Then there's two bolts underneath, which of course mine were covered up by this extremely bent up metal railing thing. What are these things called by the way? And why does everyone blatantly jack them up? Pun intended. I brute force mine out of the way with a punch, but if you have the tools and time, obviously a metalworking hammer and a dolly would have been ideal to re-straighten them. So that way somebody else can come along in the future and have the pleasure of re-crushing them. The fender should be loose now, but for my car at least, there was some adhesion between the fender and the car. I think it was gobs of seam sealer applied in the wheel well area near the front of the car. I used a flathead and scraped and peeled some of it off. I don't have a good picture of it, but it's up in this area, for my car at least. With enough of that removed, I gently start pulling the fenders upward and enjoy a decade's worth of dirt and crap falling out. Obviously if it's stuck, 
don't use too much force. Last thing you want to do is bend or dent the panel. So that's it, they're both off. Hopefully y'all enjoyed this video. I'll catch y'all in the next video where I start doing some welding. Scary. Thank you.